Stories from ancient Hindu texts have been passed down through the ages, enthralling generations of readers and listeners. These tales filled with gods, demons, and cosmic battles once captivated us as purely stories, entertaining fables that painted grand pictures of existence. As time passed and knowledge lost, the deeper meanings woven into their metaphors became obscured leaving us grappling with knowledge that feels just out of reach. What if these age-old narratives hold key to understanding our universe? What if science is now confirming what the ancients knew all along? This drastic shift in perspective compels us to reconsider our relationship with these ancient texts. Let us travel back in time. The universe, according to scientists, is between 10 and 20 billion years old yet its ultimate origin remains shrouded in mystery. Around 3500 to 4000 BCE, early civilizations like the Assyrians and Sumerians began recording celestial movements, identifying star patterns and mapping constellations. They laid the groundwork for astrology and astronomy. But despite these advances, civilizations like the Egyptians and Hebrews saw the universe through a limited lens. For the Egyptians, the cosmos was a rectangular box centered on the Nile, while ancient Hebrews believed the earth rested on great stones. While these Mediterranean cultures shaped early views of the heavens, ancient Indian thinkers were developing cosmological models that diverged significantly from those of their Western counterparts. The ancient Vedantic concepts foundational to many spiritual understandings today are increasingly seen as bridging the divide between science and religion. Found throughout the Vedas and Upanishads, these teachings emphasize the idea of Brahman and speak of a singular infinite reality that forms the essence of all matter, energy, and consciousness. Brahman is both immanent, dwelling within all things, and transcendent, existing beyond the physical realm. This challenges us to see beyond the material world, to recognize a deeper spiritual dimension that connects everything. Interestingly, this notion aligns with the modern scientific search for a unified field, the fundamental source from which all forces and matter arise. Albert Einstein's quest for a theory of everything sought to explain how the universe, though composed of one substance, energy, appears in countless different forms. Today, physicists understand that the various fields of energy we observe are just different expressions of the same unified field. This mirrors the Vedic understanding of Brahman as the singular source of all creation. Einstein also showed that space, time, and quantum fields are inextricably linked. This prompts an intriguing question. Could the unified field itself possess consciousness, just as Brahman does? The Upanishads uphold that consciousness exists by itself and that the physical world depends on it. There is no objective reality that exists independently of the observer. According to Hindu scriptures, consciousness is not something that comes about merely through the connections of neural pathways in the brain, but is a basic characteristic of reality. When seen through the lens of quantum physics, consciousness begins to appear as another fundamental aspect of reality. Some physicists believe that consciousness and quantum fields may be inseparable, reflecting the same unity found in Vedantic thought. In Vedic philosophy, the universe begins as an undifferentiated whole, a primordial state where everything exists in potential. This aligns with modern cosmology's description of the universe before the Big Bang, a singularity where all matter and energy were compressed into one point. In both views, the universe expands and differentiates, evolving into galaxies, stars and planets we observe today. This process in Vedanta is seen as the unfolding of Brahman's consciousness into the material world. The parallels between these perspectives are striking. Both describe a universe in which consciousness or energy is the fundamental substance from which all other forms emerge. Over time, the universe moves towards increasing disorder, a process known as entropy in physics. The Vedic tradition also recognizes this tendency towards dissolution, describing cycles of creation, preservation, and destruction.
just as scientists predict that the universe will eventually reach a state of maximum entropy, Vedic texts speak of pralaya, the moment when all creation returns to Brahman, only to begin anew. In both cases, the universe is seen not as a static entity, but as something that moves through continuous cycles of creation, evolution, and collapse. Both science and Vedantic philosophy ultimately lead us to the same essential truth. The universe is an interconnected whole, a vast dynamic system. The more we understand it, whether through the lens of physics or spiritual teachings, the closer we become to grasping the ultimate nature of reality. In both traditions, the concept of infinity plays a crucial role. The Sanskrit word ananta refers to Brahman's boundless nature, an idea that resonates with scientific and mathematical explorations of infinity. Indian mathematicians were among the first to develop intricate systems of numerical representation. Their deep understanding of infinity is beautifully captured in the Ishavasya Upanishad. From fullness comes fullness and what remains is still full. This speaks to the paradoxical nature of infinity, where even when something is taken from the whole, the whole remains intact. This snapshot demonstrates ancient knowledge of infinity, long before modern mathematicians embraced it. The symbol for infinity, the Lamnus Gate, was introduced by John Wallace in 1655, but Hindu iconography offers an earlier, equally powerful symbol of infinity, the coiled serpent Ananta, upon which the god Vishnu rests. This image conveys the eternal cyclical nature of existence, much like the scientific idea of infinite cosmic cycles. Perhaps the biggest mystery is how thinkers from such different times and cultures, ancient India and 17th century England, grasped the same idea of infinity. Did they glimpse the same ultimate truth of existence? The Vedas speak of a tremendous unity with the entire universe and the divine consciousness that pervades it. All that exists is one. The wise call it by many names. Scientists, too, have always sought this unity. Today, quantum physics reveals that subatomic particles are not static entities, but constantly interact in rhythmic patterns of creation and dissolution. Modern physics, writes Frithjof Capra, has thus revealed that every subatomic particle not only performs an energy dance, but also is an energy dance, a pulsating process of creation and destruction. The same rhythmic movements of creation and destruction are depicted in the dance of Shiva Nataraj. For as the inscription on stone by King Harsha states, He creates all that is and all that is disappears into the void for he is the architect of the universe. Both Nataraj and quantum physics point to the same truth. The universe is a dynamic, interconnected system where matter and energy continually emerge and dissolve. India's philosophy, as relevant today as in ancient times, offers profound insight into the nature of existence. Know yourself, tells the sage Vashishta to Prince Ram, for yourself is the beginning and source of all. This ancient wisdom, that the universe is a great vibration, a supreme cosmic force, aligns with the latest findings of modern physics. However, today we seem to have lost this deep sense of interconnectedness between the cosmos and the self. Amid this growing disconnect, we might look back to a 1960s Time magazine cover story that proclaimed, God is dead, and blamed science for it. But is that the full story? Ironically, science, which once dismissed the divine, is now suggesting that the universe may be more interconnected than we previously thought. Quantum entanglement, where particles remain connected across vast distances, hints at a deeper unity that transcends space and time. This aligns with the Vedic concept of Advaita, non-duality, which holds that all beings are interconnected manifestations of a single reality. Modern discoveries like the Higgs boson, often referred to as the God particle, point to underlying mechanisms that govern the universe, hinting at a hidden design. This resonates with the Sankhya philosophy, which views the universe as an interaction between Purush, pure consciousness, and Prakriti, nature. 
The Srimad Bhagavatam beautifully encapsulates this idea with its description of Yoga Maya, the divine energy through which Vishnu creates and sustains this universe. Vishnu's Maya is goddess through which the entire universe is bewitched. She is directed by a part of the Lord and thus she is regulated for all creation. This energy reflects the same principle seen in quantum physics, an underlying field that manifests material reality guided by consciousness. Just as Mahavishnu represents the cosmic consciousness that governs the universe, Yoga Maya can be seen as the force that brings this consciousness into form. This relationship mirrors the concept in quantum physics of a unified field, a primary reality from which all material phenomena arise. Consciousness is thought to influence the collapse of the quantum wave function, impacting the material world at the most fundamental level. To close off this journey, let us quickly go back to where we were at the beginning of this video. While ancient civilizations like the Assyrians and Sumerians recorded the positions of planets and developed the zodiac, much of early astronomy overlapped with astrology. Even figures like Kepler practiced astrology, drawing horoscopes for Emperor Rudolf. But what if historical records overlooked something more? Could ancient India have had a far older and more advanced understanding of the cosmos? For example, newlywed couples in India are still encouraged to gaze at the binary stars Vashishta Arundhati as a symbol of harmony and auspiciousness. Vashishta and Arundhati are part of the constellation that is known in Sanskrit as Saptarishi. In the Western world, we call it the Big Dipper or Ursa Major. According to researcher Raj Vedam, the binary stars Vasishta and Arundhati hold unique significance in Indian tradition. Unlike most binary stars, where one star orbits the other, these two stars co-orbit each other, symbolizing balance and mutual respect. This understanding led to a beautiful tradition. Newlywed couples in India are encouraged to gaze at these stars, reflecting on their symbolic partnership a practice that's still alive after millennia. But how did they observe such precise details about the star movements thousands of years ago? To identify this uniqueness, they must have observed patterns in other binary stars and noted the exceptional nature of this pair. So, the next time you hear a story from the past, don't dismiss it as a mere myth. These ancient narratives may hold timeless truths waiting to be rediscovered. And perhaps in understanding them, we will come to know the answer to the ultimate question. Who knows in truth? Who can tell us whence and how arose this universe? Only he who sees in highest heaven, he only knows, or perhaps he knows not.